All right. Trying to count him out tonight, Sandy. Mayor Dan McCall and I was there. Four remaining sessions are adjourned by Mayor McCall. Maybe uh, remain standing. I'm sorry. Uh, Beverly Atwood will lead us in the invocation. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us as we trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Tommy Belshi, would you lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Maybe see. <laughs> Miss Crowder, would you call the roll, please? <clears throat> Beverly Atwood. Present. Tommy Belcher. Here. Shane Burton. Here. Alan Carmen. Here. Grant Cochran. Here. Brian Crook. Here. Will Dennis. Here. Jerry Ford. Here. Chris Gregory. Here. Bubba Gregory. Here. Landon Gully. Present. Richard Johnson, Here. Judy Kerr, Here. David Nolner, Here. Leslie Overman, Here. Mark Presley, Here. Amber Russell, Here. Lonnie Taylor, Here. David Thomas, Here. Steve Whitaker, Here. all 20 present. Thank you. I'm assuming everyone's had the, an opportunity to read the minutes, so I'll uh, accept the motion to approve. Motion to approve, motion to approve by Minister Cook, second by Chris Gregory. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed, no. Motion carried. Under announcements, Steve Whitaker, would you come up here, please? <laughs> Mr. Whitaker, as I understand it, you have retired from 27.3 yes, years from the sheriff's. Is that correct? That's correct. Well, we want to congratulate you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you too much. You asked for some Wisconsin cheese. I did. We got you a whole basket. You <laughs> are all right. <laughs> <laughs> we want you to take this girl to, to Top Hall for them, okay? Great. Appreciate it, everybody. <laughs> And, and, and we're hoping you can stay on the commission about several more terms. Well, now, I hope so too. <laughs> Thank you. At this time, I would set, accept a motion to set the agenda as, as presented. <laughs> well, I had a couple of announcements I wanted to make too. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, the Community Health Center will be having an open house on Monday, August 28th. That's the same day as our meeting, uh, starting about five o'clock. And we'd like everybody in the community, but especially the, the commissioners, to, to come by uh, the health center building, just kind of see you know, where we are, what we do. Um, of course, we reopened in June. Uh, Mr. Johnson and I both serve on the board there. Um, but I just want to make everybody aware of that. And also, the Hartsville Backpack Program's car show will be this Saturday at the high school. And, uh, come out, be a lot, a lot of cars. If, if you have a old car you want to show off, show up. We'll be, we'll be glad to have it. It's always a great event, and and uh, I understand things are really humming at the community center now. Yes, they are. Yeah, that's great. Uh, any other announcements? Anyone? If not, I would accept a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Motion by Mr. Ford, second by Mr. Kerr. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say no. Motion carried. Uh, under the mayor's report, uh, we had a Zoom meeting this week with Reagan Smith. And uh, I'm sorry, uh, I'll just go ahead and do my report and come back to that, okay? Uh, under the mayor's report, we had a, a Zoom meeting with Reagan Smith, which is the company involved with Streetscape. And uh, they are they are offering a piece, a couple of what exactly was it? 
They had a couple of change orders that they're trying to push through on TDOT to get this project finalized. So they were kind of pushing the envelope to get TDOT to move and to do the final sign off on streetscape so we can put that one to bed. So uh, that's and what's what going. is the streetscape? Uh, the downtown curbs and and before we can, the, the county still owed some money on that particular situation and they can't release it until TDOT agrees. And so it's still tied up there and we can't make any changes until TDOT signs off on it. By any chance, is there anything in there that makes it easier for older people to walk from the parked car through the planted park to yeah. the there are there are a couple of breaks there, but not. And they're very small. Okay. And they're, they're not large. When we make the adjustments, we'll take that into consideration. Okay. True. Okay. Uh, everyone in the room, all commissioners, got a letter from Train uh, as to as to where we are with that. <coughs> Looks like we're going to be building pretty soon. Uh, they responded pretty quickly to. That uh, as far as a multimodal grant on the sidewalks, uh, we have no movement from TDOT at this point on that. So what they what they called a two year project could very well be a three year project because they haven't started anything at all. Uh, any other? I, I can tell the commission that uh, I made contact on the Blue Cross, uh, and and I contact the right person, and we're that that will move pretty quickly, I think. Okay, I'm sorry. I, on citizens' response to the agenda, if there's anyone here who would like to speak to the commission about a matter on this month's agenda, uh, please sign in at the podium. If you would like to speak before the commission tonight, uh, please come up and place your name on the podium, and you will be called at the proper time. Is there anyone here who wants to speak? If not, committee reports, personnel. Sir, Mr. Chair, the uh, first ever committee met on June 29th and then also on July 20th. Uh, concerned items within the personnel policy. Um, we have motions and things to uh, have a good word to do some of those policies. Uh, we've not got a final uh, for this committee report commission yet. Um, hopefully that will take place prior to the next meeting. Um, we did have a conversation on Ordinance 60 today, 23 or day 22, and that discussion remains open at this time. Thank you, sir. Law enforcement. Yeah, we met on July 10th. Uh, basically, what we did was got with the sheriff and asked them what was going to go on with him hiring his new replacements, his new openings. Uh, he said it's looking at six or eight months before he can get things going. Talking about replacing people, adding people. We also talked about Dr. Carey is gonna be the uh, inmate medical care contract again. He got it again this year. I guess he was the only one who put in for it. And uh, that was basically it. Thank you, sir. Finance committee. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Finance met on July 17th, last Monday night before work session. Um, didn't have a lot of items on the agenda for that tonight, but honestly, we went through the uh, couple of debt obligation report pieces that uh, are on our agenda here tonight. Um, really didn't have much other uh, conversation in that agenda in that meeting, honestly. No amendments at this kind of point to the new budget. So, thank you. Hope it works. We met on July 19. Discussion uh, started with open uh, about the photo season. Uh, Leo said that everything has been slowing down because it's still coming in. He said that was a financial summary by our meeting in August. He had his, he's hired a new public works assistant. Uh, we discussed the closing date on the food. It will be this Sunday. Uh, it was this uh, past Sunday, June 19th. Thursday. Uh, Seemed, he said everything seemed to be better at the pool over there this year. He didn't have a whole lot of complaints, uh, a whole lot of complaints going on. He said the chemicals were, uh, had used a little bit more chemicals this year. It seemed like it's not as lasting as long this year uh, uh, as they had been. 
then we talked about the playground. Uh, and you'll see a resolution tonight for a surplus of the playground equipment. So we discussed about what to do with that. Uh, we got the resolution tonight the surplus had equipment work. It's not like the elementary school might be one of some and some other places. Um, he, and Cliff also let us know that he's got the new Mac on him. And he's still with the devil he did. So he's confused at the time or two already. He said he won't let nobody else drive it right now. <laughs> Then we talked about the courthouse, which y'all got the email where Jack is sitting trained and trained. Uh, it got to give us a response pretty quick. So we discussed that that night. So I have things moving on that. I guess that's, that's about all we have. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other reports? Yes, sir. I wanted to make a comment on the playground. 30 years ago, I walked out of my business and went down and stayed two weeks. But today we started on that. Boy from Kansas came in here and helped us. He knew how to symbol all that stuff. We walked up to him first thing he said, Is this where you're going to put it? He said, That's what they tell me. He said, There's much elevation. I don't know if it's going back the same place or not, but if it is, Hey, 30 years ago, we've learned a lot of lessons and bought a lot of chips in the past 30 years because it's not level. That water is atrocious and it's cost us dearly for many years. So I, I don't know if the committee has considered that or not. I know that you've got to be aware of the water problems. If it ain't, uh, they need to go over and look. And if what happens, all the chips wash down the lower side. Within two years, they're rotten. We put all that in there, 21 trailer truck loads, big trailer truck loads, chips, when we uh, got it all put, put together there. Two or three years later, we put 11 more loads back in. Then we added two, three, a couple of times just that. So my first concern would be Kind of place it's slow. Don't put it back there and have the same problem all over again. You, Commissioner uh, Gregory, you want to you want to address that? I, I I think the part of that plan is to change the elevation where it'll work. It's going to be that rubberized asphalt, as I understand it. Yes, I mean as the engineers is doing it. I mean it should. I mean, they should know what they're doing. They'll probably know the elevation's not good then. And they'll change them. They'll, they'll probably never. And, I, and as he mentioned the Blue Cross, a lot of commissioners probably didn't know what you was talking about on the Blue Cross field. Uh, continue to be aware that they built a new playground, a new park in Red Water Springs, Blue Cross and Blue Shield, paid for it, built them a park and all. They've done it in several different areas. Uh, I've got some, uh, they sent me some stuff in the mail about it. Uh, and they just also some where if I did our other board meeting. So that's something. Uh, they may both make the new spaces, but see the adult business, sports complexes, a playground where we've got a playground. So we hope that we get a big ball court or some kind of deal. But, um, the mayor will get context. So I'm hoping Blue Cross come through and well, we can get something out. I was, I was in contact with a person that, that with uh, industrial development in Red Boiling that applied for that grant. And uh, I think we can take the plan that we have and show them another area or the second area we'd like to go to and that's going to be approaching and she even said that she would apply for the grant for us so uh she'd be willing to do that and she also was very impressive in letting me know that she knew all the people at blue cross to contact and she already has has that uh, network set up so i think that's probably the right way to go uh, and we'll go forward with that any other committee reports if not, we'll move on to active business. We have one appointment to, uh, it's required that we have one member of the uh, County Commission serve on the Chamber of Commerce Board. And we would recommend Mark Presley, he served in that uh, capacity before. So I would entertain a motion to, motion by, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I uh, will uh, be taking a job that's outside of Clarksville County. Uh, 
So I won't be in town during the days. So I would uh, that be fine. And just do a Any other nominations? Do we make appointments to the chamber? I'm sorry. Do we make appointments to the chamber? Yes, the commission as a whole is supposed to nominate one of their members to be on the board per their bylaws. Okay. We we have not done that in the past. Um, they're trying to start abiding by their bylaws. That's why I asked. Do I have a volunteer? Who's on the chamber? I've got a volunteer for you. Lonnie Chambers. Lonnie Taylor. Lonnie Taylor. Mm -hmm. Lonnie Taylor's name has been entered into nominations. Any other nominations? Any other nominations? If not, I would entertain a motion to uh, that nomination cease and we elect him by acclamation. Commissioner Grieger made that motion. Campbell Russell second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Commissioner Taylor, we appreciate your willingness to serve. Way to go, dude. Under acknowledgments, uh, under the debt obligation report, which you all have, the approval of, of state controller has approved of these items. That's just a matter of bringing it to the attention of the court. We have one resolution tonight. Regarding the surplus playground equipment, you've all seen that. Hey, Mayor, is this just all of it labeled out? I'm sorry. Is this just all of it labeled out? There's nothing. I think this goes to all. all the... She asked, is this sheet page on the new sheet? The uh, list yeah. public works is items one, two, three, four, five, six. That just everything laid out. That's yes. everything laid out. Correct. Yes. Which is being declared surplus. Yes. It's all being declared surplus. Uh, Dr. Satterfield, do you want to address that? Bring us up to date on kind of where we are with the elementary school request. Would you please? Mr. Gully reported us for that equipment on Friday. I took uh, Mr. Drew to the playground to look at those pieces of equipment. And there were two pieces that she and I thought would fit us weight. And I had pictures of those. And then we had a certified playground inspector installer to look at that today. And when he looked at those pieces, he found a lot of the decking where the rubber had been uh, to come off. It was compromised, built through some rust. And then he said that they had tried to replace some of these pieces. It had a name for him. I think it's miracle. And the beach grove, uh, excuse me, Beth Page Elementary, they had a piece like that. And just one of the pieces of picking was a thousand dollars a piece. And then when he looked over it, he did not think it would be economical for us to try to relocate that and to put it back together where it would be certified. And he said he advised the board he need to walk away from that. Thinking it would be too expensive for us to do. Okay. We welcome the invitation, but we just don't see how that will fit in with what we're trying to do. But thank you very much. Thank you. So everything would remain in surplus. Um, so on resolution 2023 23 792, I entertain a motion to approve. Okay. Mr. Billy. Second, okay. uh, Mr. Thomas. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed, no. Motion carried. Are we at notaries? Yeah. Okay, we only have one, one person up for a no notary tonight. It's Deborah Morton. 
uh, Deborah Morton, attorney at law, entertain a motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve by Ms. Russell. Second by Mr. Chris Grigger. Any discussion? Not all in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed, no. Motion carried. Under other business, anyone have other business this evening? Mayor, I think you have some, like, a couple of people sign in over there. Okay, we'll go to public comment. Sure. Well, they signed in. Yeah, that's what it. What they sign in for? I could just sign in. I reckon to speak under public comment. Is what we have Any other business coming from the court? So we go to public comment. Okay, at this time we'll take public comment. Anyone who would like to approach the podium that has signed in, we'll have you come up and address the court. Ashley Metter, if you'd approach the podium, please. So, um, I don't know if y'all have heard, but there was a tragic accident dealing with my uncle from the domestic side of family. June 11th, right outside of Keller's. It was on Thunder County's line just beyond. Um, but he was hit by a car. He was left um, without his key, without his wallet, without his phone. Um, to say kind of the back and forth, we had approached the Keller's to find out more about this incident because it was very unlike Jerry. Um, in that, I started looking into some further things. Um, I am working with a few different police departments and agencies y'all have here in Tennessee. Um, but in that, I was given the CAD um, open records from 2019 through March of 2023 of this year. Um, coming through them, I found it's very concerning. There's 65 incidences coming from the Keller's place. There are only 13 PD traffic initiated stops and or handoffs of inmates from other counties um, that showed up. Now, I am aware that at least sometime during this, there was a transfer of systems. So some of those may have been lost. Um, but in coming through, there is 30 of them that involve person on person crimes or injuries three of which are called in as head bleeds. Um, there are 23 property damages or theft reports stemming from that business. And then the rest are three disorderlies and nine unknowns. Um, the unknowns kind of cover, they didn't deem what it was specifically in the CAD results. Um, and do forgive me, I only found out about this meeting and that y'all may be able to help in this matter um, two days ago. So I haven't been able to get a lot of information yet. Um, but what I have gotten is that in all 65, the Kellers only call in 33% of those. I had both their business lines on there, three of the cell phone numbers from the Kellers, and I read through the CADs to make sure that if it sounded like it came from bar personnel, it was counted towards them. When you look through that, there's less than one fourth so it's 23% of them that are called in by the killers for the serious injury on person, person, or person injury. Uh, 13 calls occurred in the parking lot. And in this, we were informed by Debbie Keller and James Keller that they had removed their parking lot cameras when they shipped it over. So I looked into this part further because obviously that was what we were trying to see what happened when Jerry left. Uh, in 2019, they had four calls that really needed parking lot footage. It happened in the parking lot or it would have been involved right near the parking lot. In 2020, it was five. 2021 were five. 2022 were five. In 2023, they've already had four that needed footage from the parking lot. They advised me that they replaced, they took out that parking lot footage last year. Looking at that, it doesn't make sense to me why you would remove the one camera from the parking lot if you're not seeing anything but more increase of crime occurring in the parking lot. Uh, the other part to this, 
is in that in 2021 November, there was a report that alleges there were threats made by the owner specifically. In 2022, there's one report that alleges his keys were taken and another one that alleges he was handcuffed. The handcuffing CAD is worrisome for me because it reads that they just called the Kellers and the Kellers advised that their security doesn't carry handcuffs. This very much reads to me like calling a bank robber or asking him if he did it. Um, there's not a report that shows on this initial CAD. Now, again, forgive me, I haven't been able to open records for those reports specifically, so I could be wrong if one was opened later. That being said, my family is all in Castaigne Springs. The Keller's Bar and Grill is right there next to it. The placement of the bar is on a dark road with no lights. I understand you could want to take someone's keys to avoid a drinking and driving incident, but when you leave them no choice but to walk home on a dark road, that speed limit is not survivable if you get hit. It's insanity to keep them open without either requiring more of them or putting in and implementing walkways or safety ways for people to obtain a ride home or get home. And for me, I come from Georgia and I know down there we have a requirement for our bars to call EMS anytime any accident is happened on their property. It is documented through the Georgia system. And I was a police officer in Athens, Georgia. So that's the only reason I know that UGA is massive down there. Um, so I just ask you to look further into this, you know, look into this, see if there's, you know, something we can implement, something we can make them do that would protect patrons. Because quite honestly, more than half of the police calls being of serious injury or person on person crime seems insane for me to think that that's okay at a bar when they only call in one third of those themselves. And that's all I'll take every time. I'm thank, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Metter. Uh, James Keller. <laughs> Thanks, I'll let me speak to my thank everybody down there. He just put a face fly. Nobody still on camera now. I told him to come out of the restaurant. I showed him all the footage I had. Being a respectable person I am, I let him sit his footage. All right, so he comes to my establishment at 415 on camera. He only took five shots, one and a half shots, till nine o'clock. So how many hours is that? It takes one hour for every shot to leave your body. I've been through classes. I got my own license. I can go anywhere in the state of Tennessee and serve. And she is not, that is not her uncle. She lied about that too. She's got no family. He lived with them. So now also I like to say they let him drive a car to our establishment with no insurance. Suppose no license. I don't know about the fact of that yet. So they know he's been drinking and driving. Everybody's clear on that. That is the truth. So if she would have let him drive to my establishment, he wouldn't have been walking down the road. Also, after he leaves at 9 15, he gets missing for three hours. Nobody's, he's not in the parking lot. He's not on the road. So, who does, does he go to a bar? Does he get picked up and go get some drugs from somewhere? And then come back at one o'clock and get hit? We don't know. I guess I need some big old cameras to get the whole road 25 down there. I would love y'all to come on, put them down there. It's real easy to go missing when you've got somebody's property. Oh, look. no back and forth, please. He has the floor. You'll have your chance. So the property they're talking about, well, I got my cousin that cuts our grass. A week later, we found her cell phone. We didn't know exactly who it was. So my mother, all we want, tried to crack the code and feed them the phone. So we finally found out who the phone was. So our lawyers, we have corporate lawyers. We're LLC company. Advise us to keep the phone to investigators got there. And this did happen in Summer County. So if they were really worried about it, Summer County was really worried about it, their investigators would came and talked to me. 
part of their cows became empty. Sure, well, come to talk to me. None of their summer county cows come to talk to me. The only two people I have seen to come to talk to me about this instance is the ABC board. We give them the receipt. How many he drank? I have the top of it. There's only five drinks he done. I got the proof of that. And the ABC board is supposed to get back to me. He told me that he don't think that I'm in the wrong with this situation. But if they would have, they'd already come back and find me. Because ABC board is very strict. Very, very strict. They will take your license just like that. I know this for a fact. And she's talking about taking keys. Yes, I do take keys to somebody's job. There's a lot of people that like, don't know what goes on. My house is next door. I let people stay in my house and my floor all the time, on my porch, sleeping bags, and keep them off the road. How many people do that? I had 20 people in my house one night in my establishment to keep them from driving down the road. I like to know if anybody would do that in here. On and on and on and on my whole life. I've been there 14 years. So that's a lot of people don't know about us. And I also like to stay because I'm not going to get back up here. I said, I will be in Bowling Green playing golf tee. Like I didn't put up this stuff. So the guy next door named Chris Barber, he's put five cameras in and five sewer tanks in the ground unapproved by y'all. This is where all the chaos is going at. Drugs coming out of there. I know this for a fact. There's people coming to my farm, jumping my fences where my livestock's at. I caught one of his established people. Uh, the patrons in by my pond back there, totally drunk. He comes over there. He's feeling we're kind of getting off. I mean, it's the same thing. They're all back there together. I just want to make sure it's clear because I'm not going to get back up here tonight. I understand. Now, I have turned in a complaint on him with her. And y'all supposed to get the complaint, both of y'all. And nothing has ever been done about it. I'm very upset about it. He got five little proof campers up there. Nothing's ever been done. I guarantee you, I couldn't get by with it. And every time I do something down there, I get called on. Every time. And I'm tired of it. I'm tired of this right here, this little circus over here. If anybody wants to do something with me, I'll come on down there. I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm fed up. I've had 30 years of this. That's like 30 years. I want y'all to make sure y'all put this in y'all's mind. Let people stay at y'all's house. 20 people at a time. It even broke my marriage up. That's all I can say about it. Thank you, sir. Chris Barber. Good evening. Uh, kind of interesting. Like the last Mr. Keller, I'm going to see that. That's probably apparently up to. Um, Mr. Keller talks about how responsible of a business they are. Here's the pile of 911 calls. Like the other lady said, approximately a third from Miss Keller herself. This is a responsible establishment. I think this is pretty impressive myself. And the sad part is it's only two thirds, three quarters of them due to uh, uh, switching over computer systems. I was informed that it's not all of them. Uh, that's in our community. I want to talk about Jerry Bybee's death. He's been a great friend of mine for the last 15 years. Uh, he's worked for me part-time here and there. He's a great man. Kind of man to give you the shirt off his back. He wasn't a bar fly. His father passed away from the battle of brain cancer the Friday before he passed away. He texted me. I have all the copies of the text. Hey, come on down. I'm at Keller's. I don't go there. So now I'm up at the shop. I went to sleep about 8, 8.30, and I received text at 10.30 at night. He was looking for help. He was, he couldn't even spell. It was that bad. And it says right on my text, Bubba Keller. This was about 10.30, 10.35. From what I've been told, he was lying in the ditch on Highway 25, um, which, you know, uh, why they couldn't have called 911 or somebody to help him know they just left him out there. It's sad. It's it's really sad. Jerry was killed on June 11th, uh, age 46. 
approximately 1 a.m. walking while intoxicated, hit in the middle of Highway 25 just over the Sumner County line. <clears throat> Allow me to read off the state of Tennessee dram shop law and tell me that if this does not fall under this establishment. Someone who sells alcohol to a person who is, who is already a very intoxicated or minor can sometimes be held liable for injuries and or death. For many years, I've been. Just a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. But that nerd stuff part. That one for us in the back. For many years, I've been a cordial neighbor with tellers, and even allowed customers to sleep in my lot in their vehicles. Never had a problem. I've supported and encouraged my customers to visit, visit their restaurant. Last summer, I even did a week's worth of excavation work for Kellers up behind their restaurant and in their far fields, clearing a lot of old forestry. We've got along fine. <clears throat> and so, when, especially since when I purchased property in 2011, I've never had any problems. We've never had any problems. <clears throat> they knew my plans for an RV park. It was my retirement dream. That's what I want to do. I've had plans for this for many years. This isn't a hidden agenda. They knew it was going. But I want to get out of the trucking business, and that's exactly what I've done. I've got a, a large mechanical background, body work, body shop. I do all kinds of work on different vehicles, RVs, you name it. Well, things kind of changed a little bit. After the warrantless attacks on my campground plans, trying to shut down my business, plus Mr. Bybee's death, myself and many others no longer support them. Mrs. Keller even went as low as to call me a drug dealer on social media. I have a signed attorney appointment this week to discuss this later. Uh, Mr. Keller mentioned a gentleman fishing in the pond. Yeah, that was our mutual friend, Clay. He was going out to the catfish. Um, also, as a side note, <clears throat> in April, my RV customer was doing, uh, I'm sorry, my RV customer, which I was doing plumbing repairs on over $5,000 worth of inverters, surge protectors, plus numerous other items stolen. This unit was parked next to Keller's fence. We noticed no fresh tire tracks, uh, but broken branches going on to the property. I received a phone call just this past Saturday, sir. <clears throat> I know the names of the men that you hired to steal these are parts. Isn't that interesting? <clears throat> Let's kind of keep it back on the subject. I'm sorry. Uh, we, as a, we as a community group have spent many hours researching and talking to past and present employees of Kellers, including a server on the night of Jerry's death, plus eyewitnesses. We are thankful for these folks who have shed light on the situation. <laughs> At this time, I would like to present a reality of the local model, the Freedom of Information Act. That's where I got all of this, and if anybody can get this. And, you like to grab a pile. <clears throat> uh, there's more now because that's uh, there's next to five months that I haven't received retrieved yet. Uh, these include female civil assaults, numerous fights, theft, vehicle damage, underage drinking, many car accidents, restaurant safe break ins, beer cooler break ins, gunshots, knives, just to name a few. Miss Keller herself has made approximately one third of the calls, as I explained before. Can anyone agree that this is a, obviously an unsafe establishment? I mean, would you go to a restaurant or a bar with this? It's sad. Uh, now there's death. Please hold your comments to one more minute. Okay. Uh, the 50 50 law with liquor sales and food sales is concerning as well. I don't understand the whole parameters of it, but if you're supposed to sell 50% liquor and 50% food, how can they sell equal amounts when their restaurants are open to seven o'clock? I don't understand that. Maybe, maybe they can explain it. Uh, I think I'm good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I didn't say a motion to adjourn. Motion by Mr. Gully, second by Grant Cogney. Discussion? This motion is not debatable. All in favor say aye. Aye. For your participation.